Welcome to the Exchange Installation video series. I'm Ed. Uh, this is part five. In this uh, video, we're going to be creating a DAG for Exchange. And I just wanted to show you um, how you can do it. So, as you can see in Active Directory, which I have open, um, I have my two Exchange servers. So, what we're going to do is we're going to preempt the uh, Exchange. DAG object. So you right click new computer and we'll call this DAG01 and click OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to disable this account right because when you install fail of the cluster on the servers itself it will then go and form the DAG and enable the object. Then what you right do is right click on here Apologies, we need to view um, advanced features. So we right click properties, go to security, and you'll see that Exchange Trusted Subsystem um, normally give full permission on. And what we do now is we're going to grant uh, EX 2016A and EX 2016B. full access on the object. Okay. Now what we do is we launch our admin center, Exchange Admin Center, so you can do so by clicking Start, expanding Microsoft Exchange Server 2016, and then clicking this. If we click on Servers, and then we head to Database Availability Groups, we can now click on this, and we can give it the name we created, in Active Directory called Dagger One. Witness Server, we can point to our uh, domain controller, so DC 2016. 20, sorry. And we can call this uh, C File Share Witness DAG01. You can add an IP here if you want to go with an IP DAG, or you can go IP list. Um, which will then you'll have a subnet and that of 255.255.255.255. This will work if you're not using any third party layers like um, Odin, CloudBlue, that require an IP there because they need to talk to the actual name. So now you can click on save. So obviously it's going to give you a warning that is not a member of the local group, but because it's a DC, fortunately, um, the DC doesn't have local groups, right? Then if you click this button here now, and we manage our DAG membership, you can click the plus sign, and you can specify your two servers. Now what it does is it will validate your parameter, so as you can see now, it's installing Windows Photo of a clustering component on the first Exchange server. This generally takes a couple of, of minutes to do. And once it's done with A, it will then move to B, and then it will uh, see the file share witness, and then it will form the DAG, and everything should come online. Sometimes you run into errors where it looks simple, but there could be an underlying issue, firewall, AV, um, anything that's prohibiting the DAG from forming or getting access to the DAG. So while we wait for this, um, you can see that it's forming cluster name DAG1 on the first exchange server. And then it should basically now add the server to the to the DAG. And then it tells you can take up to 45 seconds, but I've seen it uh, happen a little bit longer than that. And if we head over to our management show here and we get, um, get the database availability groups, 
you can see that I have a, a dagger one already I don't have any servers in because it's still busy um, adding so it's already passed the 45 seconds so now you can see it successfully updated it's now going to add in the second server so it's now installing uh, exchange sorry Windows file over clustering on your uh, 2016 B server now these servers will be whatever you call them in production could be um, VR for virtual server dash EXH um, dash 01 or MBX 01 or Hub 01 or CAS 01 whatever you call it Normally guys install them according to their role or they just give it a name. In this case it's not production so I can give it any name I want. So if we go back here and we check it now you can see that I now have one server in. It's now adding the second server into the cluster as you can see. So if we go back here, there's a second server, but now you see we've run into an error. Um, so this is what I was talking about, is where you've run into an issue. Now, normally you would put your file share witness on another hub or you know, a CAS, or for example, I mean, it's just a location. So if you click close and we cancel that, you will now see that your DAG is there. Right. And if we go look at it, it's basically giving you your witness server, there's your share. And there your two servers are. Now I've generally seen this when you do it from the EAC. Normally if you create the, the DAG on PowerShell, I haven't seen these errors. I don't know if it's an issue with the EAC itself that it does this. Um, but in general you can see that it's working. Now if we took a look at the IP address I explained to you earlier on. It's 255.255.255.255 and you can see because it's an IP-less DAG. If you wanted to add an IP to this um, server, then obviously, or sorry, to this DAG, then you have to go and run the command to update this specific DAG. Thank you for watching.